Welcome back. The People's Democratic Party has once again decried the failure of President Muhammadu Buhari and the ruling All Progressive Congress to contain the incessant killings of vulnerable Nigerians by bandits in Katsina, Sakato, Zamfara, Boronu, Kaduna, Kogi, and Taraba states and other parts of the country. The party said it was hurt by the horror and cruelty Nigerians were facing in the hands of bandits insurgents and kidnappers following the failure of the APC administration to get its acts together despite the huge resources it claimed to have spent. Joining us to discuss this is uh, Niyi Akinshiju, chairman of Buhari Media Organization, to respond to some of these allegations via Zoom, and also Dixon Osaje, a security expert, to also give us an insight on what is truly going on. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, um, Dixie. Thank you for having me. Good. Uh, uh, very soon, I, I'm sure Niyu will join us. Let's start with you. And now, uh, what's your reaction to these, uh, call it serious or sh very strong allegation made by the opposition? What's your take? Well, it's a, la it's a laughable uh, 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 allegation. Uh, and uh, for me, the allegations came to me as, as a joke because uh, these politicians uh, think maybe Nigeria is a playing ground. Uh, the reason why they think Nigeria is a playing ground is because, was because uh, they are easily to uh, 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 mess up in Nigeria and go for free. You see, uh, we've come a long way, and uh, democracy is uh, about uh, uh, 21, 22 years old, and uh, we are still playing around the corner. One of the greatest disasters in mankind is when you play along with uh, human life. You don't play with human life, you know. Uh, when uh, PDP were in power, uh, the offer of Boko Haram came up in 2009. Uh, the then president was so, uh, was so lenient in, in uh, curtailing this uh, Boko Haram incident. He was so uh, tough in curtailing them because we had expected that the past president uh, would have eliminated uh, this Boko Haram incident in the earliest time. However, I'm sorry to tell you this, and this is the bitter truth. Nigeria has come so far to live and stay and breathe with terrorism. Never again can terrorism be eradicated or eliminated from Nigeria. We are going to live with it because it has fully been planted. But God forbid. Uh, because the truth is, when you go into Afghanistan or go to Iran or most of these terrorist countries, uh, they'll be battling with terrorism, terrorism, for terrorism for over 20 or 30 years. Uh, look at where we are in the Global Terrorism Index. Uh, in 2018, Nigeria was placed number three, our uh, most uh, uh, affected terrorism state in the world. How do you feel? How are we doing so well negatively? Uh, it's a very, very uh, painful situation. Last week, I, I saw the chief of army staff uh, was bouncing, looking very fresh and healthy. I had actually thought he came from a holiday in Bahamas. I never knew he was coming from the front line. And he said he has killed about, uh, uh, they decimated 1,429 terrorists. Who told you that you count the number of dead bodies when it comes to terrorism? We are not interested in people that are killed in terrorism. Counter-terrorism is not about killing Nigerians. It's not about killing the people. Because if you want to kill, you will kill to the eternity. Counter-terrorism is a two-way coin. And a mystic and population-centric. How do you apply this strategy to ensure that people who uh, are being employed into this uh, uh, terrorist act are not, are, are not, are not gain employment? I look at uh, the north. That's why I commended the... Uh, uh, the governor of Kaduna State, who has eliminated, uh, uh, what's he called, uh, al -Majiri. Oh, Because these al -Majiri guys, most of them are, are vulnerable. And these are where these Boko Haram elements uh, go around to uh, enlist their fighters. And their method of enlistment is called a, a, a dark network. So what PDP are saying is just a, a metric. It, it, it does not hold water because they actually uh, created the foundation of uh, insecurity in Nigeria. And it's really a worrisome situation. So they should all keep quiet, come together, no blame game. Nobody is going to use Nigeria or the blood of Nigeria to win 2023 elections. Nobody is going to use this uh, disappointment of APC to win 2023 elections. Neither will APC capitalize on uh, the loss of Nigeria or their uh, uh, approach to win 2023 elections. We must come back to the growing board that Nigeria life matters. We are not here to play. We are not here to joke. People are dying every day. Nigerians are dying every day. When I saw the death roll, 
that was orchestrated on Nigeria for a few days back. I, day. I put myself on the shoe, and I know that our security agency have failed. We have failed in the area of territorial behavior. We have failed in the area of operational methodology. We have failed in the area of psychological operations. We okay. have failed in the area of uh, uh, intelligence operations. In totality, we have failed. And our security uh, agency, in totality, owes okay. Nigerian apology for bringing okay. us to this mess. Because some group of elements cannot hold the army, the navy, the air force, and even the police. Okay. For about 10 years. Dixon, I, I don't want you to exhaust all the questions I have for you. Thank you for that uh, opening remark. But let me talk to an APC that's the chairman of Buhari Media Organization. And I want him to respond to this allegation made by PDP. Is, could this be tagged? You know, probably we should put it on record that um, because APC has written this statement, it is expected that we have the people in power to react to this. So this is not a one-sided argument. So, Mr. Nii, what is your take? Is there something you can take home as the truth, or you just want to dismiss everything written in that statement? Uh, there's, uh, thank you very much. Uh, very good evening to you. Good evening. I, I think when, when the opposition and uh, taking on uh, more or less uh, a situation or a form of uh, comedy. This is the kind of uh, this is the kind of uh, uh, issued statement that lacks pro profundity. Statement that lack fundamental analysis, you know, and of course lacks. Initiate, initiatives and thoughts. When, when people start imputing what, what I describe as uh, their parlor uh, talks, you know, to matters of state, you just wonder if you even want to respond to it. Because the, the, the headline of the PDP statements alluded to the fact that uh, this the the text or the bandits, you know, in uh, the northwest states, <laughs> were brought in into the country uh, by the APC, you know, for the last. Time. Nothing, nothing can be can be more mundane. Nothing can be more pedestrian, you know. Uh, I am not, I am not, uh, I am not uh, a security expert, but uh, I know that. There are there are values and processes, you know, especially in in, in conflicts, you know, and of course your guest there had uh, had made some own imputation from his own point of view, but the the reality that we that we need to follow in Nigeria today is that uh, we we have we have contended with security situation. It's 2009, precisely. And we know the intensity, conflict, especially as it affected the Nigerian geography, you know, between 2009 and, 20, and 2015. And of course, if we do a, comparis a comparative analysis of what had happened in the theater of war and in the conflict areas, between 2015 and 2019, especially in this in the northeast, what we can uh, what conclusion we can arrive at is that this government had done a lot. However, for the first time in the history of this country, perhaps since the Civil War, we have a government that is also contending with conflicts. In more states of the federation, you know, than at any time. So if we are, if we are contending with the northeastern conflict, you know, through to 2019, from 2017 thereabouts, we've already seen this other conflict spots, for better want of of the name to give it. They were described as uh, bandits, you know, and they cut across like uh, six, seven states, you know, mm. from the not, not, uh, not, not, West. not, 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 not,
what we what we are contending with is a multiple conflict fronts, and of course that requires a lot a lot of a, a lot of attention, a lot of mobilization in terms of material, in terms of equipment, in terms of money and all that. Okay. Said, I, I want to. Given this multiple and uh, multidimensional conflict points that the, that the government is seeing much, yes, more are needed to be done. We need to do more. It was not just to me that the government is doing okay. anything like that. It for, for, I... for much as we know, it has been properly pacified. Even from reports we are getting today, the casino band are being, are being engaged appropriately, you know. Okay. We believe that going forward, you know, it's, it's just unfortunate that lives are being lost. And I, it's something okay. I'm worried about, well, you know. Uh, uh, look, we will establish that is, network for you to have more clarity. But a good number of the things you said were very clear and uh, quite uh, unambiguous in your statement. But back to you, Dixon. Uh, uh, he has mentioned so many things, and uh, I want you to look at it as a security expert. Different battles at different fronts. The Northwest is dealing with the issue of banditry. The Northeast is still dealing with the issue of insurgency. We have armed robbery cases in the South and all kinds of fronts. So is this really about who is the president or who is in power? Is it not something that has affected our social fabric? Or you still insist that it's the failure of leadership? Uh, the foundation has been, uh, has, been, uh, has been messed up, as I earlier said, uh, Kayode. And uh, I also want to agree with Mr. Nee on his uh, comparison analysis uh, in respect of uh, uh, the achievement of uh, uh, this government uh, uh, fight against this project uh, because actually when this government came on board, uh, about 14 to 16 uh, local governments uh, were in the hands of the, uh, Boko Haram and the military went in uh, hard on the Boko Haram and they ensure uh, they retreat uh, those territories and that is what we call territorial behavior. Uh, you know, territorial behavior is taking account of the territory not allowing anyone to come and host a flag in your territory, go before the enemy, don't allow the enemy to regroup don't allow the enemy to build up their capacity. That is one of the things the military has achieved. So, however, I believe uh, uh, there is a setback of late uh, because uh, when we talk about uh, when we talk about battles, there are many battles uh, in a given war. Uh, sometimes the Boko Haram uh, set a battle, they, set, they defeat the army. Sometimes they come with a battle, the army defeat them. You know, they're just playing, you know, win game, win game. Uh, but sometimes the army with air, uh, air force bombardment and air force uh, power, uh, power, they usually uh, decimate these guys. But how they let us get things very clear, you know. Uh, uh, the, the mentality in which our, our military, uh, for, for instance, are looking at uh, the counterinsurgency war, uh, I think uh, they are getting it wrong, you know. Uh, counterinsurgency is not all about uh, 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 the military. It's a two coins, it's a two-way coin. Uh, the military approach uh, and the uh, civil approach. Uh, the civil approach is known as the population century. Uh, why the military approach is known as the enemy sentry, uh, because the, enemy, the military go before the enemy. And another problem we also have is that uh, the, our military has been uh, exhausted. Uh, the reason why they are exhausted is that uh, Boko Haram uh, tends to have two operational two strategies. Uh, they have uh, their political strategy and they have their operational strategy. One of their operational strategies uh, from counter-terrorism studies shows that they want to exhaust the military. They want to exhaust the, the government. They want to exhaust the state. So when they exhaust the state, they will be able to hit hard on, on, on the military. Now, if you go to the Northwest, Sokoto State, uh, Zampara State, a lot of criminal activity is taking place. Are you going to blame that on the government? No, we have to also look into our account, our border security. Nigerian border is one of the most porous border in the whole world. From the east, we are bordered by Cameroon. From the west, we are bordered by Benin Republic. From the southeast, we are bordered by... Uh, 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 from the northeast, we are bordered by Niger and Chad Republic. This country that surrounds Nigeria are all uh, Francophone-speaking countries. That is a geographical threat, naturally, on its own. Now, when you look at this porosity of our borders, what are our government doing to ensure that they cut off uh, the porosity? Because the truth is that... Let me give you an instance. There's one Nigerian armed robber uh, who repented and became a pastor. He said that one of the reasons why he flourished in his armed robbery days was that 
our borders are very porous. But each time he strikes in Nigeria, he will run to the neighboring country and take shelter. So we need to build our border security. Because no matter the effort this government is going to put, no matter the energy this government is going to put, if you don't seal up your border, you are not going to achieve any result because a borderless nation is a no nation. So I will advise the PDP okay. uh, not to play with the, not to gamble with the. I'll, I'll come life. back to it's that advice. On the... uh, Dixon, I'll come back to that advice. Let me quickly take a knee on that. And that is one of the statements made by PDP that probably during the election, these foreigners were brought in for whatever gains that uh, your party was able to get into power. Why you m continue to dismiss that? What do we do about our borders so that we do not have this kind of issues by whoever is in power? Uh, well, the, the, the truth of the matter is that uh, I, I don't know about uh, foreigners being brought in into the country during the election. You know, uh, perhaps the, the PDP that has spent 16 years in government uh, have a way of bringing in foreigners during election. So perhaps have a technique they are relating with. Uh, I, I know that in 2015, Nigerians were tired, you know, and they, they were desperate to have a stake in, in, in their government and, and party that was ruling the government at that time. So there was no motivation, you know, to even bring in anybody. In 2019, when the president stood for the election, the president had done so much in terms of redeeming the country from the abyss the, uh, the PDP was uh, throwing it, you know. So we were also ready to vote for him. So what was the motivation? We were never, we were never desperate, you know, to 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 rig, to rig elections, you know. So that too, I have always asserted that I am not a security expert, but again, there are a pure outlook to this to this uh, the problems or challenges that the case may. Thank you. Thank you, Nia Kishiju. Uh, um, I'm, I'm so sorry, time is spent. Uh, we may not be able to go on from here. Thank you for your, 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 your reaction. Let me not call it uh, intervention now. Your reaction to the statement released by PDP. On a final note, Dixon, how do we face security as security and not giving it a political coloration? Because I recall that PDP had accused APC of using the issues of Boko Haram attack to gain ascendancy into power, while APC has also accused PDP of using security to postpone election just to remain in power. So how do we take away this political coloration and face the issue of insecurity as a nation and not on a partisan level? Yes, uh, Kyle, that is a very intelligent question, and that has been my worry uh, for uh, so many years. Uh, I, I remember that in 2014, Kyle, when my uh, younger brother was shot by Boko Haram in Chibo, uh, thank God he survived that gunshot uh, during the time they captured those Boko Haram, uh, those uh, Chibok ladies. And uh, in 2015, when the election came up, out of uh, provocation, most of us uh, uh, knew the past who we voted for, you know. Uh, because APC came up with a very magnanimous promise uh, that they are going to tackle insecurity. You know, security is life, you know. Uh, without security, your business will not flourish. Your uh, environment will not flourish. Security is life. So that was the uh, 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 campaigning power they used to win most uh, of the parts of Nigeria, and they came into power. And now uh, they are in power. Uh, <laughs> uh, the security situation is really deteriorating uh, because when APC came into power, you saw the high rate of uh, criminal elements from east, west, south, and north. How most of uh, uh, criminal elements purported to be Fulani people or, uh, or, or, or presumed to be Fulani men are uh, committing a lot of havoc, killing Nigerians, going to villages. You know, the security situation is on a very high rise. But now, uh, let me advise the federal government of Nigeria and all our political parties. Let's look at Nigeria as a nation. Let's not look at Nigeria as a party. 
You know, the people in APC are Nigerians, the people in PDP are Nigerians. And most of the time, these people cross carpet. Uh, today, we saw somebody cross carpet for another party. So if you cross carpet from a party to another car party, that shows that the, uh, the interest is the uh, survival of Nigeria. Our politicians should look at the survival of Nigeria. Uh, they should not capitalize on the uh, life of anybody to come into power. And uh, I must warn most of our politicians to be very careful and not to instigate violence. Uh, because uh, psychologically, I, I presume uh, that some people will want to instigate violence in this uh, uh, government so that the people will perceive that this government is not doing so well. Whoever does that, either a political party or a leader or a politician, the blood of Nigerians should be on your head. So what we expect Nigerians to do, if APC is not doing well, PDP should be able to encourage this party on what to do or what to do more better, not to castigate. You know, because we will both put Nigeria forward. When we put Nigeria forward, things will get better. And on a final note, our military should take uh, uh, the territorial behavior of this great nation into accountability uh, because uh, uh, they've been playing a uh, uh, draft uh, with Boko Haram for about 10 years. You know, they win a battle today, tomorrow Boko Haram win another battle. The military must go into a full blood war because the incident happening in the, uh, the, uh, in the Northeast, uh, is a war situation. Uh, in a war situation, when the loss of life exceeds uh, 999, is classified as a war situation. Okay. So the situation in the Northeast is a war situation. And the thank military so must much. approach that as a war situation, then Nigeria will be a better Dixon, thank you so much. Thank you very much for your intervention. This is what I can call intervention. And uh, we hope that sometime we will also call you to come in with another fresh intervention. And by then, maybe Nigeria will go into full war against these insurgents, against these bandits, against these armed robbers. Thank you once again. Uh, we'll take a short break. And Thank when we come in. back, I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. <music> Government contract with the people is to provide welfare and secure their lives while the contract has been breached over and over again by different governments, the fact remains it is the people's right. Till and until this constitutional provision is guaranteed, we will not hold our peace. Till and until we can travel on our roads and highways without being crisscrossed by dead devils, bandits, marauding headsmen, armed robbers, and sometimes strangely uniformed men, we will not hold our peace. Our contract is not with any party. Our contract is with our president, our governors, our local government chairpersons who hold our trust through the ballot. Beyond the rhetorics and tantrums by political actors, we demand a stop to the killings. And that's all for tonight. Join us tomorrow for equally interesting conversations and have a good evening. I am Coyote. Ladendi, saying bye for now.